Thanks, Erica. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, this is a historic day for the Philadelphia Union. Uh, it is not often uh, in any sport that you get to sign uh, generational talent, uh, especially here in Philadelphia uh, in soccer. So uh, an exciting day for us, one that uh, a lot of hard work has gone into, uh, most importantly from the player, <laughs> Kevin. Uh, you know, I, I will take a second to, to thank uh, ownership, Jay Sugarman, um, who went above and beyond uh, behind the scenes uh, to, to get this complex uh, deal done. Uh, so very grateful for that. Um, like I've mentioned, Kevin is a, a generational talent. That is not the uh, opinion of just the Philadelphia Union. That is uh, globally, uh, through scouts, through clubs all over uh, the world. Kevin is 14. Uh, his job here will be to be a kid and, and play and reach his, his full potential. And, and our job here is to create an environment where he can thrive in. Um, Kevin also has an incredible support system here. Uh, I always say development starts first and foremost uh, with the parents. Uh, Brendan and Heike uh, have done an amazing job raising uh, four young men um, that are incredible soccer players. Quinn, Ronan, Declan, uh, and now Kevin, all incredible players. And incredible kids, you know. So uh, I have full confidence that this is a yes, a unique signing and a unique situation. But the support system that he has built in here uh, is is something that will will set him up for success. Uh, I have full confidence in that. Uh, a big thank you to the Union Academy as well. Um, these pathways are all different. Every kid develops at a different time, uh, and when they move up the ranks and the moment is right, um, we have the confidence here in Philadelphia to to pull them up. Uh, to the first team. So um, a lot of hard work goes behind on behind the scenes, uh, a lot of coaches to thank, uh, a lot of people have contributed to, to Kevin's development here. Uh, and, and we've become a club that, you know, wants to, you know, set the standard and, and be the gold standard uh, of youth development. We want every young kid in the United States to say, I want to play for the Philadelphia Union someday because we will put you on the field. We will not buy someone to replace you, we believe in young players in this country. Uh, so again, incredible accomplishment for Kevin. This is just the beginning, this is just the start. And uh, I really look forward to uh, getting to work with Kevin now here in Philadelphia. Congratulations, pretty cool. When are we going to see this lad on the field? Saturday night? <laughs> is it that soon? And also, what happens with the, because I, I, I'm not sure what happened with the Manchester City thing and all that. It, can you just give a status update? Yeah, look, um, this game tells the truth at, at all levels. So Kevin's been a kid um, that has risen through the academy very quickly, uh, has shown very quickly he can compete at the professional level at Union 2. Uh, the next logical step is here in Philadelphia. You know, like I said, our job is to create an environment for him to reach his full potential. And in this game, it will tell us when the next move comes. That could be in a year. Uh, that could come. You know, that could be in two years. That could be in three years. Whatever it might be, um, he's going to play at the very highest level that this sport has. Right now, we think this is the best environment for him to play uh, in a place where we have full belief in him. He has a great support system. He has his family here. He has a brother in the locker room uh, that can kind of show him the way. We have a, a pretty good identity as, as, as a club that, you know, has a good experience group that also will help a, a young player reach their, their maximum. So the sky's the limit, right? I think we all understand that. Um, 
and he is going to go to the absolute highest level, and that's, that's our job. He'll do his job on the field as a 14-year-old kid to play hard every day and thrive and get better. That's all he's really responsible to do, and, and it's our job to create the environment, and if we both do our work, um, I think this is going to be pretty special. Like I said, the game tells the truth, right? So I can tell a quick anecdote of, you know, Kevin's first training session with the first team. Um, there's, there's great Brazilian players, there's great Argentine players, there's great Colombian players, there's great American players. And the ultimate sign of soccer and the people who know what I'm talking about have played the game, right? Um, whatever age you are, when, the, when it practice starts and guys give you the ball, that's the ultimate sign of respect. And within 10 seconds into the first training session, they gave them the ball. That's probably the simplest way I can put it. And they gave them the ball more and more as the training session went on. So uh, again, the talent's there. I'm not the first person to say that. You can see it right away. Um, he's going to stay humble. He's going to stay hungry. He's going to do all the right things. Um, there's going to be noise, positive and negative, on the outside, which is natural. Um, but the game always tells the truth, and I think that's where he's at his, his most happy, and he's, he's most excited, and, and you can see it on his face. He came in with a smile, guys give him the ball, he's fun to play with, he's fun to be around, and uh, he's a special kid. Thanks. Um, one for Jim and then one for Marlon. Jim, in talking with Brendan in recent days, it became very clear that you had a very specific and major role in making this deal happen what did that mean to you and to be working with, as we all know, your old college coach to make this happen? What did that mean to you? Yeah, the Sullivans are uh, kind of Philadelphia soccer royalty. <laughs> if you go from, from Larry Sullivan, a, a guy that I get emotional every time I talk about, but uh, a guy that you know taught me so much about the game, uh, about being uh, a leader, uh, a person, uh, and a good soccer player as well. Uh, Brendan was his assistant at Villanova while I was there. And I'll just say the times were different, right? You can look up to your brother, you can look up to now, you know, whatever MLS star you love, and, and soccer's on TV all the time. Um, but Brendan was uh, the first guy that I saw that was, you know, a professional level player that I saw day in and day out, and he coached and taught me. So, um, you know, there's, a, there's an element of, of debt, excitement, you know, um, you know, uh, uh, a kind of full circle moment where he's the guy that I looked up to as a kid, also had a pretty good left foot <laughs> as well. And, and you see a lot of the same ideas and uh, creativity uh, that Kevin has. So you're right, Jonathan. Yeah, there's a, a certain you know, family element to it. Um, like I said, the, the Sullivan family, if you say that in this, in this city, I think everybody knows what it means and what it's about. Uh, incredible young kids and talented players here. A uh, father that was uh, a great father first, and, but also a great player and pushed them the right way. Um, and then obviously Larry at, at the head, and for those that don't know Larry, um, he's the best. You know, he's a great teacher, a great, great mentor, a great person, and he tells you the truth uh, every day, you know, the good and the bad, which is uh, the way it should be. And it's kind of a, a lost art, to be honest. So special family, like I said before, um, you know, one that the talent is, is here, and now it's up to us as a club to all come together uh, and, and, and maximize that talent. Marlon, he's already played for you a few times. He's probably going to play for you a few more times before he plays for Jim. Uh, what do you see as your role in all of this and making sure that the path is right? Yeah, um, I think Kevin knows you know, all these people here saying some really nice things about him, but he'll always get the truth from me, right, Kev? Um, and I think... Uh, you know, I was blessed enough to work with his older brother uh, when he came out of the academy into the second team, Quinn. Um, these guys have created an environment for him in his, in his home life, and I, and I want to really expand on what Jim said there. I mean, those guys have made him tough, as Declan and Ronan, um, his confidence from Brendan, and all of his talent and skill from his mom. <laughs> uh, but for me, it's about taking all of those qualities that they put in him and again like Jim said providing him an environment to express himself um, Kevin you know Brendan and I have a really good relationship we talk all the time we see the game very very similarly um, and we see this process very similarly as well um, and my job is to put him in a position to be successful and everybody wants to see Kevin out there on Saturday night but Kevin understands the process to getting to Saturday night um, we're going to make sure that he, he's learning, he's progressing, um, that he's held accountable as well. Um, but really, 
I want to make sure, and I think I've known him since he was a little kid, and he, he's still a little kid. Um, and so there's, there's certain ways to coach young, young guys. Um, but we're, we're not going to stifle his creativity. We're going to give him a platform to do it, and, um, but we're going to make sure that he does it the right way. And I know Cav, and he's going to do it the right way. And he doesn't want it any other way. And that's one of the best things about working with Kevin. This is for uh, Kevin. Uh, what does the, the Philadelphia Union mean to you? And, and how to hear all of these things that Jim and Marlon and everyone else has said about you and that they want the best for you, first and foremost, what does that mean to, to you and, and your development as, as a soccer player? Yeah, yeah. To to start off, the the union means almost everything to me. It's my it's my club. Uh, watching Quinn like on the sidelines of his, his games, and and I've just I've just been in and around the club since I was a little kid. So yeah, this is my home, and and it's an honor to sign here uh, for my first professional contract. But um, it means a lot that that they see the talent in me at such a young age, and I wanna I wanna I wanna prove myself and and work for this club and this city, all these fans. So yeah. Kevin, what uh, what have the last few days been like now that this becomes real? I'm sure you've had a lot of time to think about what this is like. And uh, in terms of coming here, the opportunity to play with your brother, how much was that kind of a draw for you? No, yeah, it meant a, it meant a lot uh, to finally get announced. And, and I know everyone's proud of me, and it means a lot for my family. But to be honest, nothing nothing really has happened yet, and, and the work starts now. I still have a lot to do. And, you know, my, my main goal was to win the MLS Cup. So... Development starts now, and it, it does feel nice. But yeah, I mean, still a lot of work to do for my part, and and a lot of room to grow. Uh, this is for Kevin. What do you think it's going to be like playing with your brother? Is there going to be some competition out there on the field? I mean, there, there's always competition within the household. We always play uh, two v two still to this day, and switch the team around. There's a uh, there's often fights, but no, I think I think we do have some good chemistry, and one day I do hope to link up for a goal or something like that. But yeah, it, it does mean a lot to finally share share the field with my brother. I've I saw the Hazard brothers do it, and and my main my main thought was to do it with Declan and Ronan, as because I always played on their teams for FC Delco. So yeah, I mean we were always teammates. I never really thought it would be with Quinn, but still still an honor. So yeah. One more. You heard your coach there call you a generational talent. You've heard terms like that before. How as a 14-year-old do you kind of block all that out and be a 14-year-old playing professional soccer? Yeah, I mean, my family in front of me, they always help keep me grounded. But I think it's my 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 mindset uh, in and of itself is is one of my best qualities. I, I'm usually level-headed. And I think despite all the noise, and whether it's positive or negative, I sort of just I'm focused on my game and my development. It doesn't really doesn't really get to me whether it's whether it's good or bad. So yeah. Uh, to John first, and then to Jim if you'd like also. John, the Eagles and the Phillies don't have to battle with teams from England and Germany that a lot of people in this town have never heard of, to sign players of any age, young or old. The Union do. And even among the soccer fans in town, they are sometimes held in esteem below the Manchester cities of the world. What does it say that this club now has a 10-year track record of proving that you can start your career here in a better situation than you might be in Europe and go on to Europe and be just fine? Yeah. Uh, look, for us, it's, uh, we have a track record now. We have a history of developing players within our academy, but then MLS and transitioning them on to, to bigger clubs uh, in the global game. Um, but if you look at you know the, the Aronsons, if you look at Mark McKenzie, I think we now have a proof of concept with our competitive strategy that families and players can, can truly believe in. Um, and when you have a head coach like Jim and his staff, uh, when you have Marlon, uh, when you have a sporting director and Ernst and ownership that are buying and investing into a model I think we're able to have some real sincere discussions with our players and our families to, to make them understand that our goal is to help them reach their dreams. Um, but MLS and the Philadelphia Union first team could be a good step in that process. So, um, but that's something we need to continue to keep doing. Um, 
but certainly it helps when you have the track record that we do. There's a lot of faces in here that are, are maybe new faces, right? Because this is a special occasion and, and a lot of you maybe don't fully grasp the, the, the concepts and the rules behind soccer, specifically in MLS. So could you imagine now if the, the Philadelphia, this is for the, 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 the non-soccer fans out there, but could you imagine if the Philadelphia Eagles or, or the Philadelphia 76ers or the Phillies could have youth academies and develop their own players here where there was advantages now salary cap wise that those kids stayed here and played. Imagine the advantage of and how proud the city would get behind uh, Philly kids that, that wind up playing for the Sixers and they were theirs the whole way through. It's a really cool concept. It's unique to our, our country uh, and maybe our league which maybe takes some hits for the amount of rules that we have but I think one thing we do get right uh, and certainly are the best at here in Philadelphia uh, is developing young, homegrown talent that uh, can play in, in Subaru Park uh, and, and be part of it. And if that was a, a reality in other sports where you know no one can draft them or no one can pluck them away from you, it's a really, really special thing. It's a unique thing to our league. Jonathan, you know it, but I think there's some new faces in here that could you imagine that concept uh, globally across the game? You'd have more and more local kids playing for our professional teams, which we all know uh, Philadelphians, we get behind our own and we're very proud. And this is a, a story that intertwines and relates to that. And it's uh, something we're proud of here in Philadelphia and the way we develop our players. We have a unique model, great young coaches, uh, great young players. Uh, and, and I think it gets lost now too, especially back to the soccer part of things. We have great American talent here. Um, I think we're, we're, we very much defer to to Europe and Spain, and there's great young talent there too, but we're, we have special players here. They just need a chance to, to be on the field and play, and, and Kevin will be the next one in that line. Have you noticed over the years an uptick in people who get it? Because I think you could you could go out tomorrow and say, we're not going to have a Villanova Knicks situation because they're not going to leave town. I'll, uh, I think you can tell the story, again, anecdotally throughout the league. When, when Arthur Blank learns that you know he has the Atlanta Falcons, but wait, I can sign a, a young kid, in a Miguel Almiron as an example, a foreign example, but I can buy a young kid for X millions of dollars and flip him in, in a year for 10X <laughs> more than I just paid for him. That's a concept that gets people excited. You know what I mean? So I, I think that it's starting to come now to, to Philadelphia, and this is a, uh, an example of, of that uh, as well, where there's proof of concept now. You, you have had a track record of players coming, playing for Philadelphia when the time's right. I want Quinn to go play at the highest possible level uh, in Europe, and he's, uh, he's exceeding that quickly, and it's, and it's happening right before our eyes uh, as, as still a teenager. It's going to happen for Kevin as well. Um, this is the reality of the sport, uh, and anybody who wants to have a real long argument with me, we can do it offline about where this league is going and how quickly it's going to happen because the men and women who own the teams in this league they don't lose, so that's the best way I can put it. Apple doesn't lose. These aren't people that lose. So uh, Kevin is here today because he's a great soccer player, first and foremost, but the opportunities in America are real, especially as we ramp up towards 2026. Uh, this could go to either Marlon or Jim, or both of you guys can answer this. You talk about the generational talent. What are some of the things that you see in Kevin that he excels in, and what are some things that you think that you know he still needs to develop? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think, you know, I've, like I said, I've known Cavs since he was like eight years old. Um, and he is, first and foremost, he's an incredibly humble kid. So somebody asked a question about, um, you know, the, the hype that's out there. He's not affected by any of that stuff, which is fantastic. So he keeps himself really grounded. Um, I don't need to talk about the talent. He's super talented, clearly. Otherwise, we wouldn't be sitting here having this discussion. Um, but he's got this attacking mindset that is fearless. Um, he creates goals. He scores goals. He can do it in every facet. Um, he's, he's an absolutely fantastic young footballer. And you throw 14 in there, and that's why we're all sitting here in this room having this discussion. Um, but I think what sets Cav apart in a lot of ways is really his mentality. Um, he's, he will come at you five times and you may stop him five times, but he's going to come at you the sixth time and he'll get you. Um, and it's that type of mentality. I think that sets him apart from his peers in a lot of ways. Um, he's 
not afraid. I was asked a question a while ago before we gave him his debut, are you worried about him getting kicked? And my answer was, I'm more worried about the guy on the other side who he's going to go and kick when he goes into the game. Um, it's that fearlessness for what he can do with the ball. And then not afraid to go into a first team training session with, with Jim like that players respect respect that you know um and it's that same fearlessness that wants to have them give him the ball too and on his debut game uh with at 14 years old he comes into the game I put him in when what was the score was it one one no we were down when you came into the game one 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 maybe he sets up the game winner a 14 year old comes in and sets up the game winner um with the vision, um, the bravery to play the ball, uh, play it forward. Uh, and we go and we beat New England, a team that had beaten us three times in a row. Um, and he's playing against grown grown men. So uh, I think his, what he is, is, is yeah, generational talent. And not, he'll never hear me call him that, <laughs> at least not to his face. It might be something else. Um, but he is, he is that. Jim's 100% right. He's a generational talent. And he's his sky is the limit, and we're just going to continue to help allow him to give him a platform in order to continue to to, to grow. Yeah, this is Kevin's special day, so uh, I won't do any negatives, on, only positives. <laughs> right. So his first step for me is is what really jumps off the page, where you know, and, and that that explosiveness to get away from defenders uh, and to do it at 14 is is incredible so with time um, with growth with weights with with weight training it's going to get better and better um he is relentless he is fearless he kind of embodies what you know we try to preach here in philadelphia um and he will go at you over and over again uh he's also marketable uh, he's a kid that comes with a smile on his face every day and that puts energy in everybody else so that part matters uh as well I don't know how to word this the right way, but I'm going to take a shot. Um, all over America right now, we produce kids that are really a six out of ten at everything. So they have a good left foot, they have a good right foot, they can head the ball kinda, they can you know be composed in certain moments. He's a, a specialist in that. When he gets the ball, it's electric. Something's going to happen here. He's going to do something that I don't think of as a coach. I can't teach as a coach. He's going to do something outside the box, and that's. That's something that um, you can't really put words to. Um, but again, just give them the ball. You know, that's kind of the, the idea that, um, you know, the special players kind of have it and, and some don't. And it doesn't matter whether they're old or young. It only matters if they're good or bad. And he's good. For, <coughs> for Jim and Marlon, from a, a coaching perspective, I know you're not going to set dates or, or deadlines on, on when Kevin will be in the first team, but how do you know from, from an eye test, knowing that he's got all the talent, but also everything in game is clicking? And, and how do you guys know it from as coaches that he is 100% ready? Or what's the process, I guess, to, to get to that point from a coaching perspective, watching him play? Yeah, look, we, we have open dialogue every day with, with all of our players, and that's natural. Um, anyone who sits here and tells you, you know, when I wake up, June 23rd, it's going to be, that's the morning we're going to start Cavan. That's not really how it works. So um, the game will tell us, right? So he's going to be training with the first team, right? That's how you're going to get better. You're going to have, in, in some ways it sounds counterintuitive, but it's easier to play with top players, you know, when um, it's not a knock on the younger players, but it just is, it's different. When certain guys are giving you the ball, it's to the right foot with the w right weight on it. So it makes the game a little bit easier for him. So. That is how development happens and gets accelerated quickly. Um, so he's going to jump into training. Um, we're certainly not afraid to put him on the field at any time. But if you go through the list, and again, this is Cavan's day. It's not Brendan Aronson's day. It's not McKenzie's day. It, but I didn't know the answer to that question. Things happen, and, and, and he's going to work hard and, and get on the field on, on merit, first and foremost. Um, but I'll just say publicly, he, it, it's, it's a lot closer than people may realize, you know, again. Our team, whatever we need that week, uh, it, he's going to be called upon quickly because he deserves it. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that, like Jim said, there's no magic wand to put an expectation on when that is. Um, I think my role will be very different. My role is going to let him, allow him to, to go out and fail and succeed, right? And so um, he'll be learning in front of 
you know, in front of the fans on game day. And you'll guys, you guys will get to see that. I think it's really cool that um, the second team project here allows me to put young guys like Kevin on the field. Um, and the real soccer people will, will see it. And some people will go, oh, that's Kevin Sullivan. But the rest of us will see it in a different, very different way. It's an exploratory process. It's my job is not to win games. It just so happen to be good enough that we're winning games as well. Um, my job is to put Kevin out there and to make sure that Jim and Ernst and those guys can answer that eye test and say, yeah, he's ready to go. Um, but that will come in time. We're not pressed to rush it to happen. He's good enough to play and be there. Um, but I want to make sure that people remember that he's 14 years old. There's a psychosocial part to this too, that like, he, he needs to be a kid too. Um, and that will be a big part of his development. And him getting to stay in his home, in his bed, in his house, with his family, is only going to speed that part up too. Um, and he gets to do this at his time, his own timeline, his own process. And trust me, he, he will be ready. And he's ready to play with us now, which is why we've got him in with the second team right now. I, I guess I think a lot of people are going to want to know, what do you do when you're not playing soccer? I mean, you know, are you playing FIFA? <laughs> is it, I mean, what, what do you do that makes you a normal 14-year-old? And also, if somebody can address this too, every parent out there thinks their kid's the best soccer player, baseball player, football player. Uh, the, the Sullivans, they're like, no, it's us. <laughs> but how do you know, what do you see in a kid that makes you think this kid, especially at a young age, is going to be special? But first about, you know, what do you do that proves you're a 14-year-old? Uh, yeah, to be totally honest, I'm a pretty boring kid. I don't I don't do much outside of soccer. It's it's really my life, um, soccer, homework, and then my dad runs his own uh, training facility. It's called Extra Time, so I help out a lot there. And I do like in the summers to go down the shore. I, get, and I mean, when I'm there, I'm juggling on the beach. So, um, but some some video games with my brothers it happens every so often and. Yeah, I mean, soccer is my life, so it is. It is the main main thing. Uh, look, uh, it's it was easy to spot at the youngest of ages with Kevin um, playing two to three years up at FC Delco, um, but what you saw was a player with a ton of personality and a ton of bravery. Um, and as it relates to other future potential homegrowns or other academy players that we look at, we just want to create an environment that fosters their development and creates a space where they can express who they are and find themselves throughout the, the course of their development. So uh, certainly we won't be making comparisons because it's uh, he is so special at what he does well, Kevin. Um, but it's a really good example for our other academy players and families to understand that not only does he, does, does he do special things with the ball, but his confidence in self and self-belief is what has really taken him through the ranks here and will continue to take him for years to come. Yeah, uh, we're very honest with our families, of course, or, or future prospective families, and not trying to set too high of expectations for ourselves or them. But again, it's about focusing on the environment that we can commit to so that they understand we care about developing a, a holistic athlete.
happen. Oh, IBS. Sorry. <laughs>